If you want to learn how to make a simple spleef minigame just like this, so when you walk over the parts they start to disappear, but then they start to reappear after a certain amount of time, then be sure to watch till the end of the video. <laughs> Before we get started with this video, our words of encouragement for today are keep it up. So thanks for that. So now we're going to go ahead and start by inserting our part here. We can just press part up here. You can make it however big you want. I would say around, I'm going to do 10 by 10, but you can do like 7 by 7, 5 by 5. It's up to you. So 10 by 10, and then we can just make it a bit smaller like that by 0.5. So there we go. This is our little spleef pad. You can go ahead and change the material and everything, but just be sure you anchor it like that. So now we can go ahead and press insert object and search up script. So there we go. So now we can start working on an actual script. So now we're going to go ahead and type local d bounce equals false. So what this does, it makes us a d bounce value and sets that to false. Basically what a debounce variable does, it basically stops something from being like touched more than once. So in this case, we're going to make it so it touches the spleef, then turns the debounce to true so they can't touch it again until the spleef part comes back and then they can touch it again. So let's start writing out our actual code. So we can do if script.parent, this is calling on our part, dot touched, touched, connect with a colon, and then we can do function another bracket hit. We can take out one of these brackets like this. So what this is doing is basically going to get our part, our spleef part, and then and then this is detecting if it's touched. So now it should make an end thing for us, which it just did. And now we want to make sure the debounce is false so it can't touch more than once to prevent any glitches. So now we're going to do if not debounce then and now it should make an end for us perfect. We can just take out some of these spaces like that. And now we can start writing our actual script that make the spleef part disappear and reappear. So we can start by doing script.parent.transparency equals 0 0.1. And then we can do wait and then 0 0.1. I'm going to do 0 0.1 here, but pretend you have the spleef pad 5 by 5 you could do. 0, 5, uh, just depending on how big it is, but you want to make sure it's at the right value so it disappears right when they walk off it. So this is going to be perfect for me. And then you can go ahead and copy and paste this into your next one like this. There we go. That should be enough. Now you just want to set this to 2, 3, 4, and you just want to make sure it keeps going up all the way up to 1. So just like this. And then once it goes to one, you just make that one. So now we're going to do script.parent.canCollide equals false. This makes it so they fall through it when the split part is invisible. So then here you can go ahead and put how long you want it to wait for. I'm going to put five seconds until it comes back. You can change it to whatever you want. So then we can do script.parent.transparency equals zero. This will make it so it's visible again. Now now we need to make sure they can walk on it without falling through. So we're going to do script dot parent dot can collide equals true. So let's go ahead and test this out. So if we go into here, we can do play here. And then once we go on it, and oh, we got an error. So let's take a look at what this is. Expected then. So I think what I did wrong, yeah, this is it. So we don't need this if statement. So it should just be script.parent.touch.connect. And this is totally my fault. This is a good example of why you should always test before just publishing your game and releasing it to the world. So sorry about that, guys. So now if we go ahead and press play here, this should work perfectly fine now. So here we go. If we run on top of it, it starts disappearing. Oh, why is it doing this? Okay, so let's go ahead and back into our code. See, we didn't be, we didn't set the debounce back to true over here so they couldn't touch it again. So we just want to do debounce equals true here. And then over here we want to do debounce equals false. This will make it so they can't touch it when it's turning, when it's going invisible. So it won't glitch anything. So here we go. 
into a game. And then if we rock, walk on this, see it's disappearing, then we fall through. And if we wait five seconds, it should reappear like so. And there we go. And you can keep walking on it. So if we want to make this an actual map, we can do like, we can move it up like this. I'm going to make it a checkered pattern, so black and white like so. And then you can just duplicate this to how many you want. I'm going to do like this. And then let's just duplicate it this way. And there we go. So I just did it off slanted like that so I could move this to the other side so it would actually be checkered. So there we go. This should work perfectly fine. And if you want them to be able to climb back up after they did it, you can just make a pit around this. I won't do it for the sake of time. And you can go ahead and add a truss back up. So let's go ahead and press play here and see how this all works out. So we should just fall in here because I press play here and then see it's disappearing behind us. We can run around, run around, and then this should come back in five seconds and start reappearing just like so. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something from this and I hope it also taught you how to debug. So be sure to subscribe and leave a like if this helped. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.